I like to make characters out of the trash that I collect off the beach. The tragic reality is that there's a tremendous amount of plastic trash floating in the ocean, and a lot of it washes up onto the beaches. Some gets left behind by beachgoers, and some is dumped into the ocean directly. But rivers are by far the biggest source of plastic in the oceans. People dump trash in the streets, um, and then it winds up in the storm drains. From there, it gets washed into the rivers that drain to the ocean. The amount and variety of plastic trash on the beach is staggering. I'm standing on the high tide line. That's where I walk because that's where the garbage lands on the beach. Today is a summer day, which means it hasn't rained. It's the storms that wash a huge amount of trash down the LA River. My best collecting days are always right after a storm. So today it will just be the regular amount of shit floating in the water. Let's see what we can find. This section of the high tide line has been raked clean by the city, or as clean as they can get it. I know my collecting isn't doing much to help clean the beach. One of those tractors pick up more trash in an hour than I've picked up in my lifetime. I'm a treasure hunter. I look for interesting and odd pieces of plastic. Sometimes I can stand in one place and just pick up tiny pieces. String is useful and I often pick it up even though it's somewhat messy to clean. It's worth picking up because I use it to tie pieces together. Beach toys are a big problem on the beach. I know, I know, it's the end of the day. You're tired, you've had eight beers, the kids are crying, everyone wants to go home. Last thing you wanna do is go around and find where the kids left all their toys. But I pick up shovels and rakes and buckets every single day. Here is officially the smallest shovel I ever picked up. All right, I know you guys came here for art and not for lectures on pollution and ecology and all that crap, so I'll get off my soapbox now. That's all the beach trash I collected today. Uh, but that's, uh, I didn't get very much. I was too busy taking pictures and I wasn't out there very long. This is a more typical daily haul. That's about the amount I would normally take off the beach in a single trip of about an hour's collecting. Gotta clean off all the trash, just wash off all the sand, and then I'm done. Here is my home beach trash collection. I keep a little bit on hand in case I get in the mood to make a sculpture or something. But this pile pales in comparison to my studio collection. Here is my beach trash collection at the studio. As you can see, I have all the small parts organized by color in these bins. And uh, that makes it a lot easier for me to work. I find that I, I tend to compose first with color uh, and then with shape. So I, I favor that method of working. And then we'll go over here. And these are the large parts, the big pieces. These are the pieces that usually form the basis of a sculpt, like the head shape, you know, or whatever the larger form is. It's going to be in these boxes. So it's good to have them separated out. And then finally, in this box, it's all the little stuff. All the small parts. Let's see what I got. Like, for instance, okay, like, well, here's balls. Just uh, small balls. Here's um, just all kinds of little tiny shapes. Little tiny things, tiny pieces of plastic. My incredibly tiny blue balls. Weird little character -y weird things. This is mostly just plastic fragments. So that's how I get things organized, and that makes it uh, easy and quick to find stuff. Um, 
when I'm when I'm you know in the middle of building stuff, I want to be able to find stuff quickly. Here's like just weird eyeball shapes. Uh, things like that. Anyway, that's how I get things organized. Uh, and it's a system that works really well. Oh yeah, see like this is a, this is random multicolor pieces, so it's impossible to classify by color because every piece is made up of a mul of multiple colors. So I have those. Here's the hair box. See, there are some things I feel. see most of these shapes in there. I go, oh, yeah, that's probably hair. Things in here would make would make good hair. Well, the studio's all set up for beach trash. I guess I better build something, huh? This really isn't a build video. It's more a recreation of the build video. I ultimately completed the piece you're about to see, and now I'm just reconstructing it. If you think it would be more interesting to watch a longer video of the actual process, let me know below in the comments. Making my beach trash characters is a process of trial and error. I always have the strangest feeling that my artwork makes itself. I like to assemble artwork out of pieces. It's a process that I use in almost everything I make. It's very intuitive, and when I put a piece in place, it feels right, and then I move on to the next piece. So I endlessly dig through the bins trying out a piece to see if it looks good, and then if it doesn't, I get rid of it, and then I repeat that step over and over again. It's fun for me, but it seems like it'd be fairly tedious to watch, and I'm not sure, quite sure how to go about showing it to you. I almost never permanently assemble a character. You can see these pieces are just set in place. The final artwork is a photographic print, but I do keep all the pieces collected together so I can reassemble it at any time later. If you think it would be interesting to watch me permanently assemble one of these sculptures, again, let me know in the comments below because I could do a video on that as well. The total construction probably took between, uh, I'd say two and three hours. And again, most of that time was fiddling around with parts that never made it into the final sculpture. I really like adding in the final details uh, it's the small parts uh, that are the most fun. It's amazing how adding the details in the eyes bring the characters to life and give them their personalities. The eyes are also where you can add the most expression. I like how she's looking away in despair, but he's staring intently at her. He's trying to hold on, but she clearly doesn't want to be there. I puzzled for a long time about what to do with her right arm. The baby was uh, an afterthought and one that I had not planned at all. I really liked the little blue toy and uh, I thought it would make a good last addition. Here's the final result. I really like these two kids and I hope you got something out of it. Making these videos is a learning process for me and your comments would be really helpful. Stick around. At the end of this is a short video I made a year or two ago when I was just beginning my video journey. Thanks for watching. Actually, I'm pretty proud of that. That came out really well.